good morning. morning. It is good to see you here on this beautiful Lord's Day. It is a gorgeous day out. Uh, Thankfully, fall weather is here, and we are able to meet this morning in person here uh, at First Baptist Church. And so if you're here in person, thank you for being here. Those of you watching online this morning, thank you so much for joining us online of Facebook Live as well. You could be anywhere else today doing something else, but I believe God has brought us together in worship this morning uh, to hear from him and to leave different change because we have been in his presence. If you're a first time or returning guest, if you've not already filled out a connection card, they are in the pew rack in front of you. If you take that, fill it out, you can leave it in one of the boxes as you exit today. Uh, we would greatly appreciate that. Also on the back, uh, you can use that for prayer requests and other concerns. Also drop those in the boxes or you can leave it out um, at the welcome desk as well. But uh, as we begin, uh, just a couple of announcements. Don't forget, if you did not pick up a hard copy, we do have hard copies of our newsletter available at each of the entrances, so you can get that. You can also get that emailed to you if you'd like it emailed as well. You can uh, call the church office and get on the email list uh, for that. But uh, just a couple of announcements this morning. Again, three ways to worship, 815, 1045 in person, 1045 Facebook Live. Also, we have a week delay of our sermon broadcast on KATK Radio 92.1 at 9 o'clock on Sundays for folks um, that would like to uh, listen on the radio. Three ways to give uh, through the boxes at each of the uh, exits uh, downstairs as well as upstairs. You can mail it in uh, or you can also go on fbccarlsbad.org, our website, and give safely and securely there online. Thank you so much for your faithfulness in giving to the ministry and missions here at First Baptist Church. Uh, Uh, One of those uh, ministries is Operation Christmas Child, and so if you got a box, they are ready to come back in. Uh, We are collecting all this week uh, for our church collection, and so uh, if you didn't bring it today, you can drop it off anytime through the week um, at the office. You can also bring it next Sunday morning, so I encourage you to do that and pray over those boxes that God would use them. Uh, to reach uh, the hearts uh, and minds of little boys and girls throughout uh, the world. Speaking of boys and girls, uh, we are still planning on doing our upward basketball and cheerleading ministry this year. I still don't know 100% whether we'll be able to do that, but we are still moving forward and less than until uh, we are told uh, that we're not able to do that. So we need volunteers, coaches, assistant coaches, referees, cheerleading coaches, concession stand to help, uh, scoreboard helpers and other. And so please be in prayer how about how you can can uh, participate in our upward basketball and cheerleading ministry this year, and that will get uh, started with evaluations in December. And again, hopefully we will know uh, by the end of this month, 1st of December, if we'll be able to move forward with our upward program. And one of the things that we are going to have to uh, defer this year, unfortunately, is our Thanksgiving uh, meal that we typically have. Uh, We do not want to uh, put folks at undue risk. Uh, One of the things we want to do above all else is to protect our time of worship on Sunday morning. We do not want to have to cancel worship uh, really for any reason, whether that's a a COVID uh, outbreak or whether the governor Uh, says we cannot worship in person. If you did not pick up one of these um, guidelines, these are some guidelines, policies, and procedures uh, for not only our safety, but also when we have to suspend temporarily or cancel a ministry, um, including Sunday morning worship. Again, the last thing that we want to do is to cancel or suspend Sunday morning in-person worship and Bible study. And so uh, thankfully, uh, answer to prayer, we are still here uh, this week. Uh, We did not have a change in the public health order, uh, but in uh, these guidelines, these policies and procedures, you will notice um, that if for some reason the governor uh, decides um, that we cannot uh, worship in person, the the staff and the deacons will make a joint recommendation to the church in a special call business meeting whether or not we will comply with that public health order. Again, I I believe um, that church, even now more so than ever, is essential. Man cannot live by physical bread alone, but by spiritual bread for everything that proceeds out of God's mouth. And so I believe the church is just as actually more important than Walmart or Albertsons or Lowe's or Allsup's or anywhere else that's open. And so uh, we do not want to forsake the assembling of ourselves together in person. We hope that we will not have to cross that bridge again, but if we do, 
do, uh, we will make a recommendation to the church family uh, in, in business meeting uh, about that. But be in prayer uh, in these days ahead uh, for our leaders, uh, not only here within the church, but uh, in our state, uh, that God would continue to give wisdom and they would actually listen to that wisdom and make decisions that are honoring and glorifying uh, to him. But uh, we're glad that you're here this morning as we come freely into this place uh, to praise and to worship him. You know, this uh, past week uh, uh, was a little uh, nerve-wracking, to say the least. Anybody anxious? Anybody got worried at all this past week? Any anxiety at all this past week? In, in the first service, in the second row, the hand just shot up immediately. Um, you know, we can, get, we can get anxious. We can get worried. Not just because of what happened in the election, not just because of what's happening in our culture with COVID-19, but maybe in your family, maybe at your place of work, uh, maybe in your marriage with your relationship, uh, maybe in the culture at large. Uh, But Jesus has given us the antidote uh, for worry and for anxiety. In the Sermon on the Mount, in Matthew chapter 6, beginning in verse 25, uh, Jesus speaking, Therefore I tell you, don't worry about your life what you will eat or what you will drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Isn't life more than food and the body more than clothing? Consider the birds of the sky. They don't sow or reap or gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Aren't you worth more than they? And the answer is yes, we're worth more than the birds of the air. We're worth more than the sparrow. And if his eye is on the sparrow, folks, his eye is on you and me and his church today. And why do you worry about verse 27 can uh, can uh, well I said I lost my place I'm so excited about what God has to say <laughs> verse 27 can any of you add one moment to his lifespan by worrying some translations say add even a cubit to your height man if I could add some height by worrying I'd do it but it's, it's not possible And why do you worry about clothes? Observe how the wildflowers of the fields grow. They don't labor or spin thread, yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was adorned like one of these. If that's how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and thrown into the furnace tomorrow, won't he do much more for you? Don't miss that. Won't he do much more for you, oh, you of little faith? So don't worry saying what will we eat or what will we drink or what will we wear, for the Gentiles eagerly seek all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them but seek first not second not third not last but seek first his kingdom the kingdom of god and his righteousness and all these things will be provided for you therefore don't worry about tomorrow because tomorrow will worry about itself each day has enough trouble of its own isn't that so true even today jesus says don't worry don't be anxious I got it. He's in control. God's still in control, and Jesus Christ is still king, and he is still on the throne. And that king, as we'll see in just a moment, he's coming back again one day, and that day is getting sooner and sooner. And we come into his house this morning to worship him, the king of glory. Would you join me as we ask his blessings upon our time this morning? Father God, we do thank you. Uh, for your word and father we thank you for uh, your promise that you will be with us always even to the very end of the age father that uh, you are in control that you are sovereign and that jesus christ is still king and father this morning we come into this house freely uh, to walk through these doors uh, to gather here in person yet again uh, to worship uh, jesus christ the king of glory Uh, Father, we pray that this morning that our hearts and minds would be open and receptive to all that you have for us today. Father, for you speak through the the songs that we'll sing this morning. You speak through the word that will be uh, proclaimed in just a few moments. Father, you speak through uh, the fellowship time that we have before and after this service. You speak through the prayers. Father, you are always speaking. Uh, Might we hear today? And might we... uh, put into practice all that you're calling us to do. Uh, Father, this morning, uh, it is a privilege, it is an honor to come and to gather with one another and to worship you. And Father, in these uncertain times, when things change so rapidly, 
uh, when uh, we don't know what's coming tomorrow. And Father, we know this, that great is your faithfulness, that morning by morning new mercies we see. And Father, you change not. Your compassions, they fail not. And great is thy faithfulness unto us, unto this church. And Father, I pray this morning uh, that you would encourage us through your word, uh, that we would uh, keep our focus where it rightly needs to be, on King Jesus. And we keep our focus on him as we run the race that is set before us. We ignore all of the noise around us that wants to get our focus off of Jesus. Father, help our thoughts. Help our heart, help our mind be directed to you and in through your Son, in the power of the Holy Spirit, that we might receive and, and, and know perfect peace, shalom, shalom, even today. Now, Father, this morning we come to worship Jesus. Father, might all that we say and all that we do, as we kneel and bow before him and him alone, and Father, might it bring you honor, might it bring you glory. For all this we ask in Jesus' precious name and for his sake, amen.
We have a citizenship not only here, but one that is in heaven. Lord, that you have called us to be a part of your kingdom this morning through our faith in you, through the shed blood of Jesus Christ, that we can be called your children. So Lord, help us that we might always walk close with you and that we might allow your light to shine brightly in and through us so that others might see your kingdom being lived out even here and now, among your people. God, as we look to your word today, we pray that you'll open our hearts and our minds to what you want to say to us today. And may you receive the honor and praise, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much, Pastor Kevin, praise team. You know, perhaps uh, we have been reminded even this week, and as we sang this morning, take this world and give me Jesus. This world is not our home. This is not where we belong. We are just passing through, as Pastor Kevin mentioned a moment ago. You know, I I wasn't sure until yesterday exactly how I was going to begin uh, this message because we were not quite sure and and still aren't 100% sure of who the uh, president will be, if it will continue to be President Donald Trump or if former Vice President Joe Biden has been elected. At least he has been projected to be the winner of the 2020 presidential election, but uh, we understand that it is ultimately we the people. Uh, going through the, the, the formal processes that we have in place that will ultimately determine uh, the outcome of this election. Uh, I was uh, living in Florida. I was actually born and raised in Florida. I had moved back to Florida after uh, graduating from seminary and was in Florida in 2000 uh, when the Bush-Gore uh, election was going on. That was not finally decided until well into December. And so we still may have a bit of uncertainty play out before us. But you know, regardless, Regardless of who ultimately wins, God is in control, and Jesus Christ is still king. Every four to eight years, we have a peaceful transition of power here in this country. It was actually 20 with FDR and Truman in the administration from Democrat to Republican back then. But you know, in the aftermath of one of the greatest battles ever fought on American soil, 
at Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. Uh, Abraham Lincoln, the 16th president of the United States, delivered his famous Gettysburg Address on November 19th, 1863, 157 years ago this month. Lincoln reminded the nation then, and his words still remind us today, that this nation, and here's two words that are indispensable for what Abraham Lincoln said then and what applies now, this nation under God. This nation under God. Now, whether it's in the Gettysburg Address or whether it's in the Pledge of Allegiance, one nation under God, th this nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom and the government of the people, by the people, and for the people shall not perish from the earth. But folks, it comes down to those two words, not just on paper, but it comes down to those two words as we live as citizens of a heavenly kingdom here on this earth that we are under God. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. Jehovah God, Yahweh God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Moses, as we'll sing at the end of this service, uh, America the beautiful God shed his grace on us. But folks, we must bless him even if we are to expect him to bless our nation. Folks, it is because of the devotion of the men and women of our armed forces since that great civil war that America remains a free people in a free land. Our freedoms ultimately come from God himself, who has endowed us with certain unalienable rights, among which are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. No matter who the president is, nor no matter what Congress or the courts may decide, these freedoms can never truly be taken away by government because they are not governments to give in the first place. Our freedoms, including the freedom of religion, including the freedom to come worship God here in this place, including the freedom of speech and to be able to share and proclaim the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ, are ultimately gifts from Almighty God. They are not grants from the government, state or federal. Today, as we thank God for these freedoms, and we want to take a moment to give honor to whom honor is due. And that are the men and women of our armed forces, our veterans who have uh, give, given themselves, who have sacrificed uh, that we might continue to come into this place this morning to freely worship uh, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And so if you are here this morning, if you are a veteran or if you are active duty military uh, personnel, would you stand and remain standing that we might recognize you and your service to our nation? If you're a veteran here, God bless you. God bless you. Amen. These beautiful flowers here given by Miss Margaret McClure in, in memory of her dad who served in World War I in, in France. And your dad, amen. How, how many had, had relatives, dads or other relatives, who, who served in World War I, World War II, other war? Wow, look. Because of their sacrifice, we're, we're here today. And we're able to, to freely worship in this place, to, to walk through these doors and not have to worry about anybody keeping us out other than ourselves this morning. And so we, we thank God for the freedoms that, that we enjoy here in this nation. You know, other nations around the world, they don't have the freedoms of, of this democratic republic. That, that used to be taught in civics class way back when. I don't even know if we have civics classes anymore in school, but we are a democratic republic. We're not a pure democracy, but we elect our representatives who will represent us, whether that's in Santa Fe or in Washington, D.C. And so we're, we're not in a monarchy, but there are other monarchies all around the world, and there are a couple longest-serving monarchs in, in anybody know who the longest serving king of all time is uh, apart from one I'll give you in a minute but an earthly king anybody have any guess I, I, gave, a, I gave you a hint with the flowers and, and who Miss Margaret's dad served in France so I give you a hint Louis the 14th yes I want to ask you when he served as long as you know when he served oh that's So, but that, that's on me because I did not tell you specifically you cannot answer if you've already been in the first service and heard it. <laughs> okay, now, 
this next one, if you were in the first service and already know the answer, you can't answer. All right? Anybody know who the longest serving living monarch is today? Yeah, you got that. Queen Elizabeth II, 68 years, 276 days as of the day. Uh, came into to her office February 6, 1952. Wow, what a a long reign that she has had. You know, as citizens of the United States, we don't have a king or a queen. We have a president. But believers here in the United States, as well as around the world, but even here in the United States, we are citizens and subjects of a heavenly kingdom. And even though our, our government is not a monarchy, we ultimately serve a king. And he is actually the longest serving monarch of all time. Nobody is even close, and that is King Jesus. And whether folks realize it or not, one day every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is king. He is Lord to the glory of God uh, the Father. Uh, whether people acknowledge it today, one day they will acknowledge it. But folks, if you know Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord, that means that you become part of his heavenly kingdom here on earth. And Jesus spoke much about the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God. It's simply the rule of God that he exercises through the person, the work, and the teachings of Jesus. Christ's kingdom has to do with his reign with all people in all places, in all things over which he rules. The kingdom of heaven is referenced at least 30 times in the gospel of Matthew. Matthew liked to use that terminology, kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of God is referenced at least 47 times in the rest of the gospels and then some even into the book of Acts and other parts of the New Testament. The kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven is both a present reality and a future yet to come. It is a future hope. It is both now and later. Christ's kingdom was ushered in at his birth and continues to advance as his people live out the gospel message throughout the world. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. The kingdom of God will ultimately be realized when Jesus returns to set up his eternal kingdom here on earth. And that day is getting sooner and sooner and sooner. Uh, even so, Lord Jesus, come. Now, what does the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God consist of? What, what is foundational to the kingdom? How did God's kingdom end up on earth, and what does it require of us? What does it mean to seek his kingdom first and his righteousness? How can we be a kingdom people living out kingdom principles in our culture, even as so many in our culture simply flee from God and the kingship of Jesus Christ? This morning we began a new sermon series entitled Kingdom People kingdom principles. What does it mean uh, to be a kingdom person? What does it mean to be part of God's kingdom here on earth? And how are we to live out those kingdom principles even as we wait for the Lord Jesus to return again? Uh, this morning we begin looking at, at how we even become part uh, of the kingdom. It, it were the very first words of Jesus in his public ministry. If you have your copy of God's Word and are able to stand as we turn to the Gospel of Mark, and I don't know if I already told you to turn to, gospel, to the Gospel of Mark, did I? No. So you've already been turning there. So really, Bible drill really quickly. Gospel of Mark, chapter 1. So they already had it open, so it was no fair. Whether you've got it on your tablet or your phone or a hard copy, uh, Mark chapter 1, these, these are Jesus' first words, as at least as recorded in the Gospel of Mark. First words are important. Last words are important, and with Jesus, everything in between obviously is important, uh, but you want to kind of give a primary consider. What did Jesus say first? What did he have to say the very first thing when he began his public ministry? And we have it here in verses 14 and 15 of Mark chapter 1. Now after John, the John there is John the Baptist. John the Baptist was arrested. Jesus went to Galilee proclaiming the good news of God. In verse 15, here, here it is. Just, here's what he, he could have said anything else, but this is what Jesus said. The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. The time is fulfilled. The, the kingdom of heaven ha has come near. Repent and believe the good news. News. Father, we thank you this morning for that good news. We thank you for Jesus Christ uh, who uh, in his life uh, by being born, 
into this world by ultimately going to the cross of Calvary, they're dying on the cross, uh, not for his sins, but for our sins, the sins of the world, uh, dead and buried, rose again, ascended it into heaven, coming back again one day, and that day getting sooner and sooner in power and glory for his bride, the church, and all who repent and believe the gospel, all who repent and believe the good news, uh, their sins will be forgiven, washed away. And Father, the good news is still available for us today. So, Father, I thank you for the word of Jesus. I thank you for his proclamation of the kingdom of God having come near and for the call in each and every life to respond to the kingdom and to the king by repenting and believing the good news. Father, I pray this morning if there's anyone here who has never repented and believed the gospel, Father, I pray your Holy Spirit would open their heart and mind to draw them to the cross, to the empty tomb this morning, that they might leave here as kingdom people, and that they might leave here as part of, of your spiritual, eternal kingdom. Father, I pray this morning if there's anything that stands in our way of us who are already part of the kingdom, bowing down and worshiping and submitting to the authority of King Jesus in every area of our life, Father, I pray that you would help us to repent of that and to live by faith, to believe that Jesus is who he says he is. He's done what he said he would do. Father, I pray this morning that you would speak to us through your word about how we can be a kingdom people living out kingdom principles, impacting this culture, this world, with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And it's in Jesus' precious name that we pray and ask all these things. Amen. You may be seated. Folks, what does it mean about the kingdom? How did the kingdom of God come into being here on earth? Three things from these two verses, particularly in verse 15. First of all, the kingdom of God came at just the right time. And notice what Jesus says, the time is fulfilled. In other words, the time is now. At just the right time, God's plans for a king were fulfilled. The Old Testament prophets had prophesied that there would be a coming king, there would be a coming Messiah. They may not have known exactly who it was going to be. They may not have known it was going to be Jesus, but they knew that God is a God of his promise. God is a God of his word. And God was going to send a coming king. In fact, these verses from Isaiah chapter 40, verses 3 through 5, can be found in the Gospel of Mark as well as the Gospel of Matthew, uh, speaking of the one crying out in the wilderness of John the Baptist, a voice of one crying out, what? Prepare the way of the Lord in the wilderness. Make a straight highway for our God in the desert. And every valley will be lifted up, and every mountain and hill will be leveled. The uneven ground will become smooth, and the rough places a plain. And here it is, the glory, the glorious of the only begotten Son of the Father, the glory of the Lord will appear, and all humanity together will see it, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken, and what God has spoken, he will see, comes to pass at just the right time. God's plans for a king were fulfilled And in the New Testament, we see of that fulfillment, Galatians chapter 4, verse 4, but when the right time came, God sent his son, born of a woman, subject to the law. Ephesians 1, 9 through 11, God has now revealed to us his mysterious plan regarding Christ, a plan to fulfill his own good pleasure. And this is the plan. At the right time, he will bring everything together under the authority of Christ, everything in heaven and on earth. Furthermore, because we are united with Christ, we have received an inheritance from God, and he chose us in advance, and he makes everything what work out according to our plans. No. His plan. See, his plan's not always our plans. See, he, he does things that sometimes we don't understand. Folks, God, God sent Jesus Christ into the world at, at just the right time. Why? Because God is an on-time God. God is never early. God is never light, late. His timing is always perfect, even though we may not understand it in our own lives, even though we may not understand it in the life of the church, even though we may not understand it in our nation. Uh, folks, God's plan is always plan A. It is never plan B or plan C because God doesn't have a plan B or plan C. He's always got plan A, and plan A is always Jesus. Folks, in your life and in my life, the life of the church and the life of this nation, God's plans are perfect. We may not always understand it. There might be times in our life where we even don't like it. We might even question, God, are are you sure? 
Are you sure you're doing? I, I, I don't know. I, I don't. That's why we have a peace that God gives us, which passes what all of our understanding. Because there'll be things in this world that we simply do not understand, that we simply do not see. But we know that we have a God who says, for I know, Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the plans I have for you, saith the Lord, plans for good and not for evil, not for disaster, to give you what a future and a hope. See, in Jesus Christ, God already had it all worked out. He, his plan was perfect, and at just the right time, Jesus Christ entered into this world, broke into human history, and because of Jesus breaking into human history, all things have been changed. But God is a God of perfect time, and, and maybe in your life here this morning, you simply need to be reminded that God will work out all things together for your good for those who love him and are called according to his purposes and to his plans and he'll do that at just the right time and in just the right way we don't we don't have to understand it we don't even have to like it at times but folks we do need to trust god that god is a good good father perfect not in just some of his ways not, in, not just in most of his ways, but God is a good, good father, perfect in everything that he does in our life, the life of the church, and yes, even in the life of this nation that we call our temporary home. At just the right time, God broke into human history. The kingdom of God came for you and for me. Uh, do you need to, to know that God's timing for you this morning is going to be perfect? As so we wait upon him. But you know, God's kingdom not only came at the right time, but Jesus reminds us that the kingdom of God came in the right person. The time is fulfilled, what, and the kingdom of God ha has come near. You see, Jesus is the right person. Uh, the prophets, they didn't know exactly who it was going to be, but they knew that the Messiah was coming, and indeed the Messiah has come. Luke chapter 1, verses 30 to 33. Uh, we'll probably see these verses again in, in December as we celebrate the first coming or the first advent of Jesus. As the angel of the Lord uh, spoke to Mary, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Now listen, you will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will name him Jesus, and he will be great. We be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and don't miss this, and his kingdom, kings and kingdoms, shall all pass away. But there's something about the name of Jesus. There's something about Jesus that is different from all other kings and queens that have ever reigned on this earth, and his kingdom. Even though all the other kings and all the other kingdoms will pass away, his kingdom will have no end. Folks, he is king, not just tomorrow, but he is king today. And he is ruling and reigning, and one day that kingdom will come on earth. And as we pray, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Jesus Christ is the right person that God sent to usher in his kingdom. But don't miss this. What does Jesus say? The kingdom of God has come near. The kingdom of God has come near. The king has come uh, to save us. First and foremost, Luke 19, 10, for the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. That's why Jesus Christ came as the king. Folks, he came to seek and to save those who were lost. That's us. That's others that, that you might know that still are lost, who have never repented and believed the gospel. The king left his home in glory, came to be born as a baby in a manger could have done it any other way but yet he was born ultimately that he would die on the cross of calvary for your sins and for my sins and the sins of the world the king of glory has come near to save us from our sins but but there's an, another application to to this that the the kingdom of god has come near emmanuel 
God the King is now with us. He, he came to, to be with us. Wow, think about that for just a moment. The King of glory, who, who's, who through, th- by God through him spoke everything that we see into existence. This same King left his home in heaven to come to be near us. So I, 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 I visited London a couple times. Love, love to, to go overseas and love, love London and, and England. And I've been in front of the Buckingham Palace. Anybody ever been to the Buckingham Palace? A few people. Beautiful. But you know, you, you, you can't really get very close to Buckingham Palace. There's big, big gates all around, big, big fence all around. They've got guards that stand all. I, has anybody ever had an audience with Queen Elizabeth II? No, I, I haven't. You know, um, anybody ever have an audience with a president of the United States? Everybody, anybody ever been in, in, in the, the, pres- the president of the United States? Yeah, pro- probably not many of us, if any of us, will ever get. We might see them from afar. They, they might wave. They might wave from the balcony. They might wave at us from, as they're going to, to the helicopter and you're out standing beyond the, the gates there at the White House. But we'll, we'll never get close. But we have a king like no other. And see, we didn't have to strive to get close to him. He came to get close to us. Now, that's good news. The good news of the gospel that Jesus Christ, the king of glory, would come and want to get close, would get, want to get near to sinners like us. And not just to be near and then to leave. Oh, no. Jesus says, oh, I'm going away, but don't worry. I've already promised I'll, I'll be with you what always even at the very end of the age, don't worry, I'll have the Father. He'll send another one like me, the Holy Spirit, and he'll be with you, and he'll take up residence in your life, and he'll be with you forever, wherever you go, so that we know that no matter what we face as people living in this world, as people of the kingdom, we have a God who has not only promised that he would be with us always, we have a God who not only has come near, we have a God who says, I will continue to be near you, and I will continue to walk with you no matter what you face in this life wow folks that's good news good news that the king of glory has come near the kingdom of god has come near and is still among us even today folks this morning do you you need to simply be reminded that no matter what happens in this life no, no matter what happens in the weeks ahead, folks, and I, and I will tell you, no matter what happens in two Senate races in the state of Georgia, folks, don't sweat it. Jesus is still king, and Jesus says, I will be with you always, even to the very end of the age. Folks, this morning, when we're in the presence of a king, King Jesus, and he speaks. Jesus is always speaking. Folks, when King Jesus speaks, he expects a response. And he gives us the proper response to, uh, we should have the initial response, and that is the response of repenting and believing. The time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. You see, the kingdom of God has come at the right time. It came in the right person. The kingdom of God always calls for a right response. And King Jesus, even this morning, is asking for a right response. And he tells us that that right response is to repent and believe the gospel. Repent and believe the good news that he is who he says he is. He's done what he said he would do. For some this morning, you've given the wrong response up to this point. Previously, you've rejected Jesus as king. You're not part of his kingdom. You've never repented and believed the gospel. 
Oh, maybe you've heard the gospel, maybe you've heard the good news, uh, but you've up to this point you've simply rejected Jesus as king. Uh, maybe something else in your life is king. Uh, maybe money is king, maybe job is king, maybe status is king, maybe even family is king, maybe your sports or hobbies are king. Something else is king in your life this morning, and you simply up to this point have never acknowledged Jesus as Savior, as Lord, as king of your life. You've never bent the knee to King Jesus, repented and believed the gospel. Folks, it is only this side of of eternity that we're able to do that and folks there are some this morning up to this point even this morning in this worship service who have never submitted to king jesus and if you were to die today uh, you would leave this world to spend an eternity in a very real place called hell separated from a loving and holy God. Folks, there, there are no second chances once we leave this earth. We either go to heaven or we go to hell. There is no purgatory. There is no in-between. It is one or the other, and it all is dependent on how we respond to King Jesus in this life, on this earth. And for some, you've given the wrong response all the way up to the very present. For some this morning, you, you've, you know the right response you, you've heard the gospel, you know the gospel, you know what you should do, you know that you should repent and believe the gospel, but it's always tomorrow, maybe. It's always tomorrow, maybe. It's always next Sunday, maybe. 2020 has been, this has just been a year to, I, I don't want to, to respond and get saved in 2020. I always remember that I got saved in 20. First Sunday of, of 2021, maybe. When, when I get my act together, maybe. It's always about tomorrow. You know what you should do. You've heard the gospel. You know that you should repent and believe the good news. But it's always tomorrow. But tomorrow may never come because we have no guarantee of our next breath, much less another day. But for some this morning, the right response is today. Today. So now. Now is the acceptable time. Now is the day of salvation. Now is the day to respond by repenting and believing the gospel. Folks, those are, are Jesus' words. Those are the first words that he spoke in his public ministry as recorded in the gospel of Mark. Uh, the, the time has come. The time has been fulfilled. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe the gospel. So simple but yet for many so hard to do. This morning, King Jesus, who came at just the right time, who came as the perfect king, who continues to reign and to rule as king of glory, who one day will set up his earthly kingdom. Today, King Jesus calls each of us to respond in repentance and faith for the very first time, if you've never done that, for Christians this morning to continue to live a life of repentance and to live by faith in him and him alone and to submit to his kingship, which means that we do what he says we're to do. We're to go where he says we're to go. Uh, we're to speak what he says we should speak. We're to refrain from doing that which he says we should not do. Why? Because he is king and we are not. This morning, are you a kingdom person? Have you repented and believed the gospel? If not, then today is the day. Not tomorrow, maybe, but today. And if you are a kingdom person, maybe there's something in your life that, that's just been hanging you up. Maybe something that you, you just haven't submitted, or maybe you submitted to King Jesus, and then before you know you pick it back up. And you submit it, and then you pick it back up. Maybe it's your family. Maybe it's your health. Maybe it's your finances. Uh, maybe it's your marriage. Maybe it's your kids. Maybe it's your rela relationships. Maybe it's even politics. And folks, this morning, 
If there's any area of our life where we simply have not submitted it to King Jesus, today is the day, not tomorrow maybe, but today, to submit it to King Jesus, to leave here as a kingdom person under the authority submitted to the king to go wherever he tells us to go this week, to speak to whoever he says to speak to this week. Might we as a people, gathered and scattered, be a kingdom people, living out kingdom principles, impacting this community, this state, this nation, and this world like never before as we live by faith in Christ, in Christ alone. Let's be kingdom people. Let's live out kingdom principles for his glory, the King of kings and Lord of lords. Let's pray. Father God, thank you this morning. Uh, that you have invited us to be a part of your kingdom in and through Jesus Christ. Father, we we cannot earn our way in. Uh, We cannot buy our way in. We cannot be good enough to enter in. It is only by the shed blood of Jesus Christ that he paid it all. All to him we owe. Sin had left a crimson stain, but he washed it white as snow because of what he did on the cross of Calvary. Father, I pray this morning if there's anyone here who has never repented and believed the good news, Father, I pray your spirit would open their hearts and minds to draw them to the cross to the empty tomb this morning today that they might be saved. For today is the day of salvation. Today, right now, is the acceptable time, not tomorrow maybe. And Father, I pray this morning uh, for your kingdom people, sons and daughters of the king who are already part of your kingdom. Father, I pray that if there's anything that stands in the way of our complete and total submission to you. And Father, I pray that you'd bring that to our mind this morning, and that we would repent and that we would live by faith. We would confess that, say, Jesus, I lay it down. Maybe you've laid it down before, only to pick it back up. Today is a new day to to lay it down and say, Jesus, I I lay this down at your feet. I I humbly submit my life to you. I I submit my job to you. I submit my health to you. I submit my family to you. I submit this nation to you. I I submit it all to you. So, Father, I thank you this morning that uh, you have invited us to be a part of your kingdom. Father, help us to be that kingdom people living out kingdom principles, impacting this world like never before. And Father, as you speak, you invite us to respond to you. Father, I pray that we would respond in obedience, repentance, and faith at this very moment, not tomorrow maybe, but right now, right here, in Jesus' name, amen. As we stand together, as we sing, Pastor Michael, I'll be here at the front. Maybe you simply need to come to the altars this morning. Say, God, God, I I, I symbolically, I lay this down at your feet. I I kneel at the feet of King Jesus, and whatever it is that's hanging you up, whatever it is that's tripping you up, then I I lay it down at the feet of King Jesus. And for those who need to come this morning to to believe the gospel, to repent and believe the gospel, uh, might today, right now, this, this moment be your moment, your time, as we sing, as Jesus invites you to respond to him.
him we owe. Sin had left a crimson stain, but he, and he alone, washed it white as snow. Uh, might you, if you've never repented and believed the gospel, if you've never put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ and Christ alone, don't wait till tomorrow, maybe. Do it today, even right now right here. Thank you for being here this morning. Thank you for being a part uh, of this church which continues to be a kingdom church made up of kingdom people who will live out kingdom principles in this world even if the world does not want to, to receive them or know them we still live as kingdom people with the power uh, of God. God's got work for us to do yet still uh, to reach men and women, boys and girls with the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. Thank you for being here this morning and a part of all that God is doing. I invite you back tonight at 530 as we gather together for Bible study and uh, ministry uh, for all ages uh, this evening. I uh, hope you have a wonderful, blessed uh, week in the Lord. Be healthy, be safe. Uh, we have the blessings of living in this nation. Uh, the freest nation on the face of the planet. America has been blessed by God. Might we bless him in return. We're going to sing America the Beautiful as our benediction this morning, and then we'll be dismissed. God bless you.